Now at this time, Dr. Percy Ray from Myrtle, Mississippi will come and bring God's message, and I trust you hear him prayerfully. Now at this time. John chapter 8. Verse 12. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. The Pharisees therefore said unto him, Thou bearest record of thyself, thy record is not true. Jesus answered and said unto them, Though I bear record of myself, yet my record is true. For I know whence I came, and whither I go. But you cannot tell from whence you come, and whither you go. Ye judge after the flesh, I judge no man. Yet if I judge, my judgment is true. For I am not alone, but I and the Father that sent me. It is also written in your law that the testimony of two men is true. I am the one that bear witness of myself, and the Father that sent me beareth witness of me. Then said they unto him, Where is thy Father? Jesus answered, Ye neither know me nor my Father. For if you had known me, you would have known my Father also. These words spake Jesus in the treasure as he taught in the temple. No man laid hands on him, for his hour was not yet come. Then said Jesus again to them, If I go my way... And ye shall seek me, and shall die in your sins, where, whether I go, ye cannot come. Then said the Jews, Will he kill himself? Because he saith, Whether I go, ye cannot come. And he said to them, Ye are from beneath, I am from above. Ye are of this world, I am not of this world. I said therefore unto you, That ye shall die in your sins. For if ye believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. Then said they unto him, Who art thou? Jesus said to them, Even the same that I said unto you from the beginning. I have many things to say and to judge of you, but, ye that, but he that sent me is true. And I speak to the world those things which I have heard of him. They understood not that he spake to them of the Father. Then Jesus, Then said Jesus unto them, when you lift up the Son of Man, then shall you know that I am He, and that I do nothing of myself, but as my Father hath taught me, I speak these things. He that sent me is with me. The Father hath not left me alone, for I do always those things that please Him. As He spake these words, many believed on Him. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on Him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. They answered him, We be Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? Jesus answered to them, Verily, verily I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth forever. If the son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. I know that ye are Abraham's seed. But ye seek to kill me, because my word hath no place in ye. I speak that which I have seen with my father, and you do not that which ye have seen with your father. And ye do that which ye have seen with your father. They answered him and said to him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said to them, If ye were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. But now ye seek to kill me, a man that hath told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This did not... Abraham, you do the deeds of your father. Then said they to him, We be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. Jesus said to them, If God were your father, ye would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God, neither came I myself, but he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech, even because you cannot hear my word? Ye are of your father the devil. And the lust of your father will you do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar, and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, you believe me not. 
Which of you convinces me of sin? If I say the truth, why do you not believe me? He that is of God heareth God's word. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. Reading beginning with the 12th through the 47th verse. Chapter 8, John. Let us pray. Dear God, tonight we've come back to your house to worship you. So we confess our sins of lust and pride and self, foolish jesting, evil thoughts, idle talk, ugly walks. Or any other sin that would keep us from seeing you tonight and recognizing your presence in this temple. Oh God, tonight, thou hast said, your hands are not shot that it cannot save, ears not death that it cannot hear, but that our sins have separated between us and you and hid as it were your face. God, we want to see you tonight. We want to adore you, worship you, behold you, pour out our affections to you. So we pray as earnest as we know how, sincere as, as we can pray, forgive our sins, blot out our transgressions, rent the veil between us and you, and let us look at you. May we recognize thy presence in this service tonight. Bless every church represented. Bless every home that's represented. God, take thy servant and loose his tongue and illuminate his mind. And we pray, God, that you shall help us present the truth and that the truth shall set us free of some things. And let us be free, no longer bound with the things of Satan. Oh, God, help us tonight to be loosed, to serve you, to honor you, to recognize you for Jesus' sake. Amen. And the 44th verse of the 8th chapter of the book of John. Ye are of your father the devil, the lust of your father will ye do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar, and the father of it. Then with that, I want to call your attention to another passage of Scripture found in the first chapter of James, book of James. Read three or four verses there. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Do not err, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Of his own will begot he us with the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. When lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And when sin's finished, it bringeth forth death. Let no man say when he's tempted, I'm tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. When we are tempted with evil, God don't do it. It's not of God. Whatever evil inclinations you have and whatever temptations you have of evil, remember God didn't do it. God can't. He's holy. He cannot sanction sin. He cannot approve it. Therefore, he'll not tempt us with it. We find God saying, I'm not allowed you to be tempted above what you're able. With every temptation, I'll make a way of escape. I'm not have any temptation to attack you. I won't even permit temptation to attack you, but which is common to man. I'm not going to let you be over-tempted. You ever hear people say, well, if, if the preacher had to live with what I have to live with and work where I have to work and... If he had to do so-and-so, he'd understand. No, he wouldn't. 
Because God said, you know, I'm not going to allow you to be a temple with any temptation but which is common to man. So you can quit running around and your pity in yourself and have a bad case of self eyes and saying, well, I'm so tempted you haven't got any more than any rest of us. Right. Right. So as a result, just keep that in your system as we go along. You don't have any more than any rest of us. God said, I'll not allow you to be tempted with any temptation but which is common to man. It's a common to everybody else. Just It's not some extra thing. It's just an old common thing. But he said, with every temptation, I'll make a way of escape. He said, you don't have to do it. Paul got out and said, God, take this thorn of the flesh out. God said, I'll not do it, but my grace is sufficient to help you take care of it. So, my friends, uh, I want us to realize then, as we think about it tonight, that... When lust is conceived, it bringeth forth sin. Sin entered into the world through seduction and false statement. And he said in the latter days, there'll be all kind of seducing spirits and doctrines of devils to lead us away. We end the day of seducing spirits and doctrines of devils is flooding this country. So as a result, my friends, that's another evidence of the latter days. But as we stop to realize that, uh, sin entered by seduction and enticing. Sin entered by a lie, and sin is still a lie. He, the devil, seduced Eve, deceived her, and said, Why has God said that you couldn't eat of the fruit? You see, the devil knew that God hadn't told the woman not to eat of it. He told Adam not to eat it before the woman's ever created. And so the woman wasn't told not to eat it. And the devil knew that if she ate of it temporarily, it wasn't going to harm her. See, temporarily I said it wasn't going to harm her. So as a result, the devil said, Yes, God said that thou should not eat of it. When did God tell you that? He didn't tell you not to eat of it, did he? And listen, you'll know as God knows, and you'll be wise if you that you'll get some real knowledge. It'll be a great breakthrough that God's holding you in the dark, and the light will break through, and you'll really know something if you'll just eat that fruit. She ate it, and temporarily it didn't have any effect on Eve. It didn't. No ill effect. Temporary. But then she went and took it and said to Adam, Eat of this. Oh no, God said, We're not to eat of that. Why, she said, I ate it. And I'm a part of you. Didn't hurt me. It's good. It's delicious. Best thing you ever tasted. Come on. And Adam listened to her and ate and the curse fell on Adam and since Eve was taken from Adam she's a part of Adam and it hit her see until Adam became cursed Eve couldn't be because she's a part of Adam and Adam was the one transgressed God's law not Eve so the curse came God put a curse upon Adam. Then because she's a part of Adam, he put a curse upon her and said, you shall be submissive to your husband up until last time. God didn't take woman from man's head that she might be ruled over, nor from his feet that she might be trampled upon, but took her from his side that she might be his equal. And she was until she let the devil seduce her into doing the things she did. And then as a result, since man... Let woman control him and took his and took her thinking over his when he was supposed to be first. Then God put a curse upon her and said, You shall be submissive to your to your husband, and he shall rule over thee. And man immediately made her inferior and man superior. You women said don't like that. It's so whether you like it or not. And I can prove the inferiority of womanhood. Men never try to be like women. But men, women's all the time trying to wear breeches like men. 
cut hair like men, cuss like men, drink like men, act like men, go places like men, cuss like men, be like men, and if it grow anything this under the nose like a man, they grow that. And I can prove it from another viewpoint. You can let a bunch of women be over here in a house by themselves and let something happen, they'll all get scared to death. And some old man will come in there, maybe he couldn't kill a flea. And they say, well, there's a man in the house now, it's better. That's <laughs> all. So, you can't help it, it's that way. <clears throat> now, I'm not protecting us men, so don't you women get mad at me. Because we're to blame for you. Your meanness and everybody else's. Every mean streak in us comes from man. A lot of times you say he got part of that meanness from his mother. He never done it. He got it a bit from his daddy. Mothers don't pass meanness. If you could get some of you inherit some of your meanness from a mother, then Jesus would have had it. Back of sin is Adam the man. So we're to blame with every bit of the sin in this country we men are. If we get in our rightful place, Women that get in there. Man stand where he ought to stand. The woman have to behave herself. Amen. And I want to, I wish I had time to say a lot about that, but i got to go along. But the thing of it is, I want you to realize, my friends, then God said to the dead, to Satan, He said, the seed of the woman will bruise thy head. And your seed shall bruise the heat the heel of the seed of the woman. And you're cursed and you'll crawl on your belly the rest of your life. Dust to the earth. And as a result of it, the curse came. And the devil's been a dirty crawling outfit ever since. And the devil has been sowing seeds of slaughter and lying and slander and everything he can to defeat God's young ones ever since. So he said, when lust is conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And when sin's finished, it bringeth forth death. The devil sows his deadly seed in human lives. And those lies produce lie, slander, hate, murder, slaughter, and all kind of corruption. Now you listen to me. The devil is helpless and friendless and homeless without a man. There ain't a thing a devil can do except man submits one to do it through him. Now if the devil got out, the man run down to the hogs and they committed suicide. For that, that old bunch of slop eating, squealing hogs had drove a suicide that would be disgraced for the devil living in them. So when the devil left the man, they hit for the lake and drowned themselves. The only thing it'll be a friend to the devil is a man, depraved humanity. Why, you can let the devil get in a cow and he'll have a fit. I saw the devil getting a bunch of dogs one night and they run themselves to death. Nothing will put up with the devil except a man. I give you some more scripture. There's a man who uh, swept his house clean, garnished, and empty, and drove the unclean spirit out. And the unclean spirit went to and fro. This was places, clean as places, dry places, hunting somewhere to stay. And all of his looking could find, and come back and peeped in this man. And his house was still empty. He didn't enter right there while he's running around trying to find somebody. He bumped in and said, more that was more wicked than he. They didn't have no horse to stay either. He went back and said, hey, come on. That half stuff got out of us still empty and we're getting him. Yeah. And they all eight come back and got in. The last state of the man's worse than the first state because my friend's devil come in on him. And he had eight, seven more devils than he had to start with. But see, the only thing that'd be a friend to the devil is man that praise humanity. And that's the only... Uh, the way that he's got to work is through humanity. We must never forget that. The only thing the devil can live off is the immorality and vulgarity and violence of man. Depraved humanity. The only thing will be a friend. The only thing that will house him is a human being. Nothing else. You can let the devil get in the animal. He'll kill himself if he don't get out of it. You just try it. I've seen it cry. Nothing will put up with the devil except a man who's depraved. 
A lot of times we wouldn't put up with him if he wasn't a slave and his prisoner had to. But you keep that in mind. Sin enter in through seduction and false statements. My God won't hurt you. Go on, read it. Well, you'll know as God knows. See those lies? All right. Then the devil, my beloved, throws out his enticing bait. And like a fish, as the bait is thrown out and drove through, luring the fish, he grabs the bait and is caught on the hook. The devil throws out his luring lies and is so baby and luring, we grab it and it hooks us. And we become the victim of the devil hooked with his lies and with his enticing bait. We're drawn away from what's right. And as a result of it, my friends, there can be no sin. Now, I'm making a tremendous statement that you probably won't accept, but go home and digest it, and if you can come out with anything else, then please help me, because I've been at three days and hadn't found any way out. There cannot be a birth unless there's two. It takes two to produce a birth. Therefore, lust when it's conceived brings forth sin. The devil can't hatch out sin unless somebody has an affair with him. Now you think that thing through. The devil can't hatch out sin unless some human being has an affair with him. You've got to have two to produce, reproduce. So therefore, my friends, before sin can come in your life, you've got to have an affair with the devil if you are a Christian. Now that may shock you. But no sin is hatched in your life until you have an affair with the devil. If you are a Christian. If sin comes in your life, how did you have it except you had an affair with the devil? Now, it's like a harlot. He tells us in the book of Proverbs that a harlot allures and entices a man to her, her haunts and then through her allurement and her enticing and her uh, building a man up, soon his resistance breaks down and he has an affair. Samson, the strongest man that ever lived, laid his head in the lap of Delilah and did not lose his strength. She kept enticing him. She kept playing with him and fooling with him. He laid his head in her lap the second time and the third time. But he resisted. But the fourth time, he broke over his will and yielded to her, and an affair took place that blinded him, bound him, and headed him into a premature graveyard. Now, until Samson yielded his will to the lap of sin, there was no affair with the devil. But when he yielded and gave his will to the will of sin, then there was hatched out sin that produced his death. Now, I wish I had time to preach a sermon on that, but that ain't my sermon tonight. That's just the introduction of it. But I got to have that in order to get over the truth. There cannot be any sin without an affair with the devil. God can't produce sin. The seed of God produces righteousness. But the seed of the devil produces sin. Now, you just go home and chew on it. Every time you sin, you had an affair with the devil somewhere. And that he injected his seed of a lie or of envy or jealousy or something else in you, and it hatched out in you. And you sin and you've got it in you. And when that sin happens, something dies in you. 
You never sin in your life that something didn't die. If I sinned to sin, something died in me. I'd have been a stronger character and a stronger Christian and a stronger person if I hadn't sinned that sin. Because something died. Some resistance or something died in me. Every time you sin a sin, something dies in you. And you'd have been a stronger Christian and a stronger character if that hadn't died. But now then, you wouldn't have sinned, neither would that have died in you, had you not been having a affair with the devil somewhere or another. Listening to his lies. Looking at his allurements. Listening to his falsehoods and his seducive words. And the glamour of his way. And it's glamorous. It's always camouflaged. All right, watch. As a result of it, when both seeds, and he said, the seed, thy seed, will bruise the heel of the seed of the woman. Now, the devil's trying to get you to sin because it'll cripple you. It'll hurt you. It'll bind you. It'll defeat you. He's as going about as a roaring lion seeking to divide you. And he's constantly trying to find something to get you. Now, you keep that in mind as we go along. And as a result of it, my friends, we realize that the devil lures us, and then he captivates us through our consent and the yielding of our will. When lust conceives, of course, it brings forth sin. And sin kills peace, kills hope, kills our usefulness, is, uh, uh, my friends, uh, conscience and our soul joy. And so as a result, lust includes evil imaginations, pride, malice, envy, vanity, and love of ease. The appeals are from without, not from within. Men that are saved, women that are saved, the appeals of the affairs of Satan is to your depraved nature. Paul said in the seventh chapter of the book of Romans, I do that that I would not do. And that I would do, I do not. But if I do that that I would not do, it's sin that dwelleth in the flesh. And it's not the spiritual side. Declaring the two natures. So my friends, after we're saved, the enticing must come from without. It can't come from within. But because of the depravity, the carcass of man, because that that flesh did not get born of God, that was born of the identity part. And so as a result, it's still got that depraved nature. So the enticing, alluring seducings come from without and appeals to the flesh and the lower nature, the carnality of us, and does not appeal to the inward, regenerated part of us. And that's why we weaken. Now then, that brings us to the things I want us to see. And as I said, I haven't said a lot of things I'd love to say about it. But time will not permit to get over the other. So as a result, when we consent to the allurements and to the enticing and seducing powers, and our will yields, then the lust of your father, the devil's side of it, will you yield to. So I'm talking to you tonight about uh, babysitters for the devil. Now, you remember one thing as an introduction to this message. That you cannot reproduce sin without having a prayer with the devil. So all the sin that's in me as a preacher, and in these other preachers, and the deacons and the church members, is because we've had some affair with the devil. Now, that sort of cuts against the grain, but we've got to take it. And if I'm wrong, you prove me wrong by the scripture, and I'll apologize tomorrow night. All right, when I have an affair with the devil, or you have an affair with the devil, then sin is hatched. And then when that sin's hatched, the devil takes that baby and lays it on somebody's doorstep to hinder them. All right, for example... You're trying to live a Christian life. And somebody gets evil imaginations about you. 
And the devil begins to allure and build up evil imagination, and they tell a lie on you. And you find out they told a lie on you. And as a result of them lying on you, the devil grabs that baby and lays it at your doorstep. I said, look at that. They've lied on you. They just plain imagined up a lie and told a lie on you. If I was you, I'd get that thing and make them face it. Why, the devil's had an affair with somebody and that's got a lie. And he brings it, lays it on your doorstep. You get out there and look at the pitiful little thing. That thing, poor little thing. I'll take you in. And you go to run around with that lie in your bosom. And you start babysitting for the devil. You ain't going to do nothing else for God because somebody lied on you. And you ain't got time serving God for rocking your lie, baby. And the longer you hold that lie, the sweeter it gets. And the more attached you get to it. And the more you believe it. And the more important it becomes to you. And the preacher... And your best friends say, come on, that's just a lie. Come on. Fact, sir, God. No, I've been hurt. They've lied on me. I just can't give it up. They just lied on me. I just can't give it up. Oh, this is mine. I got me something to keep me from serving God, and I ain't going to serve Him no more. No, you're not going to take my baby away. I've been hurt. It hurt me all the way in. I ain't giving up that. Mm-mm. I'm going to babysit for the devil the rest of my life. I'm through with the preachers in the church. I'm done. Amen. Praise enough. We got a lot of baby Baptists sitting home tonight, baby sitting for the day. Hey, 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 won't give it up. They ain't coming back. Poor little orphan lie, baby. Well, if I went back to church, I'd have to give up my baby and I'd learn to love him, cherish him. Oh, my. I just can't give it up. He'd cry if I give it up. I just can't go back up. I've been lying on why, if I went back, I'd have to acknowledge I had the wrong baby. I ain't going to give up my baby. It would be so awful. Are you babysitting for the devil? Do you quit God because somebody lied and laid it at your doorstep and you went out there looking for the little orphan thing and caused the devil left it there? You run out and grabbed it and you're, you're babysitting for the devil. He don't want that lie. He wants you to grab it and take it home and nurse it. Right. He wants you to... Stay home and nurse that lie. He got put at your doorstep. He's never been known to do nothing but lie. Right, right. And my beloved, if you was what you ought to be, when you saw that devil leave that lie out there, say, uh uh-uh. uh, old Lucifer, ain't my baby. Amen. You can take him on back if you want him. Amen. He can stay out there and rob if he wants to. Amen, brother. That ain't my baby. I didn't hatch him out. Let the one hatch him out have him. Yeah. Amen. 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 Let the one hatch him out keep him. Let him come back and get him. He hatched him. Let him look after him now and clothe him and feed him. But I want you to know one thing. There's another side to it. The one that had an affair with the devil hatched that lie. Something's died in him. Right. He's got a guilty conscience. And the joy is gone. His usefulness is gone. He, 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 he can't have a relationship with God anymore. That's right. Yeah, that's right. He lied on somebody. You're not going to get out there behind the tree and straighten it up. Right. You're going right back up that, that door set where you laid that lie and confess you lied it and you never have any more peace. That's you never right. have any more joy. You're dead as a Christian. Yeah. You're lifeless as a Christian. You're a helpless as a Christian. As long as you don't straighten up that right. 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 Oh, folks get mad at the preacher, some deacon, tell some lie and run off and think they can get by with it. But I'll tell you one thing, you'll never see another minute's peace, you'll never yeah, see another yeah, bit of yeah, life, man, you'll right. never see another bit of happiness until you go back up there and get that baby where you put it and take it home and straighten it out. Right. Right. So there's two sides to this. Right. You not only got hurt, but the one that grabbed the baby got hurt. Yeah. But the thing for you to do as a Christian... 
Bless God if they put a lie out there. Just let it lie. Right. Right. You say, I'm going to find out who told that lie. Yeah. You'll never find the lie because you can't find the lie because it's a lie. Now, the truth you can find. The truth is something that's a reality. Right. Right. But the lie is something that's a falsehood. Right. And how can you find something that ain't? Yes. You can't find something that ain't anymore and you can come back to somewhere you haven't been. Right. Now, a lie is a falsehood, and a falsehood is something that ain't so. And you go out and spend the rest of your life trying to find the lie, and you don't have a find. Right. So instead of trying to find it and take that thing in and nurse it till you can find who birthed it, you better leave that line back in the house at your doorstep and go on and serve God. Yeah. Now you know whether it's a lie or not. Right. Nobody else don't. Right. But you know. Right. And if it's a lie, you leave it alone. If it ain't, you might ought to take it in. <laughs> Do some confessing and cleaning up. But I know when the devil lays something in my doorstep, whether it's a lie or whether it is. And if it's a lie, that old slummy outfit can have it, and the one that had an affair with him to hatch, hatch, hatch out that baby can keep it for us. I'm saying, I'm not going to go out there and pick up their lie and tear it around and rock the devil's baby and be a babysitter for the devil, a devil, and that lie can have it and do what they want to do with it. But it can run on my doorstep. I'm not taking it in with me. Are you babysitting for the devil? Amen. And my friends, we stop to recognize another thing. Falsehood and murders and lying and slaughter being the chief and top of all of evil passions of sin. All the devil touches is false. Yet it's glamorous. Now let me say something else before we get too far. The devil don't give birth to his babies down in an old shack. Down in the thicket somewhere. Down in dirt and filth. His baby got on dirty diapers and rags. Birth down in the shack somewhere. Because nobody wanted it. Then it's filthy and nasty and dirty diapers on it. And out of an old shack, out of a bunch of trash. Why? Nobody wants it. They wouldn't like it at all. But the devil burst his in the high up crowd. You know, nice homes and nice social people and nice everything. The high ups so it, it, it's so glamorously hatched out that everybody would want to hold it. <laughs> So the devil never had his eye a bunch of lies down there and some old trashy people that did never go to church. A bunch of harlots, no amongst and drunks. And they never had out the lies on the preachers and the deacons and the church people do. Oh, Who does right, it? God. Some of the folks right high up in the church. Right, 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 right. Some of the leaders of the church. Yeah, some of the deacons right. or teachers or some of the high up influence are crowd in the church. That devil has to find them to hatch out the baby. So everybody on that. Brother so and so, this so and so, oh, that so, you know who they are. Man, they, they just, 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 they they just, they just, they just, they just, they Amen. The lies that's hatched out is never hatched out down there in the shack of right. sin wrecked people. It's hatched out with some of the high up folks in the church. Because they will know that when he lays it at your doorstep, you'll grab it. You want to hold it. Why, if some old shackly, rackly cussed sinner had a light on you, you'd laugh about it. It was called some important person in the church told a lie on you. Teresa. Are you babysitting for the devil tonight? Was some lie somebody got started hatched out on you? Or do you, if it wasn't a fit as a lie, why don't you leave it laying out there and tell the devil and the, and the one that had an affair of the devil hatched out, come on back and get the baby and let it rock one. You're not taking it in your house. You're not going to babysit and rock it. you got too much to do for God. Man. Devil comes along, 
and some member of the church has an affair and the devil hatches out some hurt feelings. And brings it and lays it at your doorstep. And some of the best folks in church said, that preacher just throw that at you. We all knew he was cutting it too. Some time ago I was a preaching and a man in our church didn't even think about what I said. But some old sister run around and said, did you not detect that he, he's just throwing that at you? Just as well as he called your name. And he come over my house mad enough to whoop me and said, how come you to pick on me and everything but call my name this morning? I said, I wasn't picking you and thinking about you. said, yes, you was. I didn't think anything about it until after it was over with. And one of the dear women in the church came and said, dear, I feel plumb sorry for you. The person, person just as well to call your name every this morning. Everybody knew he was hitting at you. And said, I wouldn't know nothing about She hadn't called my attention to it. And so all it was, that little old gal had an affair with the devil. And he said, I want to wreck that man in the church. Yeah. And so you go tell the preacher who was doing that to hurt him. Yeah. Right. And had out a hurt feeling. And the devil grabbed it and laid it at his doorstep. And he went out and grabbed it and said, my feet hurt. I ain't coming back no more. I've been mistreated at church and I'm too. I'm done. I got to stay home and nurse my feelings. I know you. You're pretty and I just love you. I'm going to take you back up and get you hurt no more. Don't hurt my feelings no more. Won't snog me no more. Won't slam me no more. I'm going to go take you back up and get you hurt. And I'll fuck you snog you. He's playing snog you. Slamming you. Just did it to hurt you. <laughs> Don't get hurt no more. I'm going to stay home with you. I'm going back to that church and wind through. I'm gone. I'm going to keep you home right here. Bless you. I just love my feelings so good. And the longer you nurse that baby, the devil's hatched out. The sweeter it'll get to you. And the more tied into it it'll get. And finally, the preacher and the deacons and nobody else can't get you to come on back and behave yourself. No, sir, I've been hurt. I slandered. I snobbed. I was mistreated. They took me out of the position I was in and they've done it on purpose. They meant to hurt me. They wouldn't let me teach again. They meant to cut me to pieces. They wouldn't let me be deacon any longer. And I've been deacon 20 years and they cut me out. And I ain't going to go back no more. Some of the best people in that city just done it for spite. Just done it to hurt me. And they, and then have an affair with the devil. Say, look, the old brother, they did that because they did for it hurt you. See it? Don't you see that's done? Oh, yes, that's it. I got me a baby to rock. I'll babysit for the devil for the next 20 years and not go back up there no more. I'll rock my devil's baby from here are you babysitting with the devil with some hurt feelings? Because you thought somebody the devil made you believe somebody slandered you? And some man or woman in the church had an affair with you, the devil, and hatched that idea out and planted in you and gave you that baby. And you're running around a rocket and the baby's sitting for the devil and letting the world go to hell Amen. and letting the devil not feel up on you. But you remember another thing. If you hit to create that atmosphere, in that person's heart to make them grab that baby. Somebody had to have an affair with the devil to hatch right. that baby that's out. Right. Right. That's right. And I want you folks that's grabbing the baby to remember that one thing that wasn't hatched out by God but the Holy Ghost. Oh, right. Somebody had to have an affair with the devil to hatch that thing out and put it down at your doorstep. Right. Somebody had to have an affair with the devil to hatch right. that baby that's out. Right. 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 That's right. And I want you folks that's grabbing the baby to remember that one thing that wasn't hatched out by God but the Holy Ghost. Oh, no, right. Somebody had to have an affair with the devil to hatch that thing out and put it down at your doorstep. Right. And they had an affair with the devil and they hatched out a baby of hurt feelings and unforgiven spirits 
and laid it at your doorstep and you grabbed it and you've been babysitting the rest of the time with unforgiven spirits and hurt people. You're not doing a thing. And my friends, God won't answer your prayer. He said, if you do not forgive me, the will my Father would you in heaven forgive. You can't even... You say, well, I can worship God and pray just as well at home. You're a liar. God says you can't do it. He said, I will not answer your prayers. And I will not forgive you. And while you're sitting home rocking that baby for the devil and babysitting for the devil, you can't even get a prayer through. You are gone. And you keep that baby there, your prayer privilege is cut off. And if you can't pray, your sins is piling upon you. Amen. And if your sins are not forgiven, God's going to whip the breeches off on you. Amen. And you in danger, tragic danger, of the chastening wrath of God coming on you because you're getting a whipping for it. Amen. So you as well face the truth of it tonight. Are you babysitting for the devil? Somebody else has an affair with the devil. When the do? Hate comes out. I hate his guts. I hate him. I'd kill him for good. Why? Somebody had an affair with the devil and told you a bunch of stuff. And created a bunch of hate in you. Or the devil got in somebody and made them do something to you and mistreat you so sorely. You say, I hate them. I wish they're dead. I'll kill them for good. And the devil sees, grabs that old baby of hate and puts it at your doorstep. Said, look at that. Nobody's ever been treated as dirty and as low down and as mean as you've been treated. Just look what they did to you. If I was you, I'd grab up that little old hate and take him in and not let him die on the doorstep. So here you go. You get to hate him. And God said, he that hated his brother has no life in him and is a murderer. So you've turned out to be a murderer. Because you grabbed up old murdering's baby, you've turned out to be carrying around murder. Carrying around murder. Yes? The devil done got somebody to mistreat you and had stopped old murder. And you grabbed up old murder and you run around rocking murder. I ain't a bunch of inch. I'll kill the devil if I get to it. I wish he's dead. I could laugh if he died. I hate him. I hate him. I hate him. I love him. I love to hate. I just love to hate. I enjoy it. I'm true. No, you just babysitting with the devil and nursing hate and murder. You just nursing little old murdering. Babysitting for murder. Somebody had an affair and had stopped murder. They it's your door. You grabbed it. And that wasn't God in you. That was the devil got you. Right. You say, well, it did it. All right, leave it laying out there. It won't hurt you. They always wanted to be hurt. Right. Right. I've had people do things that just like pulling my teeth to me. And it been easy for me to hate it. But I said, oh, devil, you just got your own baby on the doorstep. I ain't taking him in to me. Yeah. I got to live with myself and with God. Some time ago, some, I took a stand and, and wrote up some of the devil's business. And they did some tremendous things and wrote some slanderous things. And, and some two or three lawyers come and said, Preacher Ray, you can sue them and, and live in luxury the rest of your life. They got all kinds of millions and property and dollars. And said, we'll sue them and take half of it and give you the other half. You'll have millions to live on. You'll have to turn your hand again. They've done enough to you that we've got enough that we can sue them without anything, without one minute's struggle. We can take everything they got. All you've got to do is to say the word. You won't even have to hardly tear. And we'll get the money and shut them up forevermore. 
and the devil said, Won't you go on and grab that? Boy, you have plenty. The rest of your life, you'll never have to want nothing. Won't you go on and grab that and run in with it, son? And I said, Old man, devil, you hatch that devil out. Y'all just keep it on your doorstep. I ain't taking it in. And let that crowd have it. And you know, they did it to kill me, to destroy me, to slaughter me, cause it hadn't been for me. They tried to disgrace me and slaughter me and rape me and, and kill me and kill my influence as God's man. And the devil said, why don't you grab that and take it in and hold on to it and run? And I said, uh-uh. <laughs> you just lay out there and rock me. That bunch is all done dead. I'm still going, Lord bless with the help of God. Sin hatched out death for him. Because he tried to slaughter God's man. You let me tell you, when you start having a prayer with the devil, you get mad at God's man. You go take out you some good burial insurance and hospitalization. Yeah. Double up because you're fixing to collect hospital right, and burial insurance right quick. I'd rather go out here, my friends, when it's a flashing fork of lightning out of the sky and stand there and curse that lightning and dare God to strike me with a fork of lightning than to allow one of God's holy saints or God's Amen. 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 Because when you hatch out that, buddy, when you have an affair with the devil and hatch you out something to try to kill the influence of God's preacher and God's servant, and God's leaders in the church, I want to tell you something, bud. You've done hatched you out some sin that'll produce death in you. You just go on and pick your bearing plot out when you get through slandering and lying and ripping God's man and God's church. You just go on and pick you some bearing church and pick you out a pretty bear and watch your picture and enjoy both of them. Amen, Doc. Amen, Amen. And I ain't going to grab that baby up and baby set for the devil the rest of my life. If it ain't so, I ain't taking it in. You can tell anything you want to on me. You can call me a Bezabal, a hypnotizer, a devil, a holy roller, unbaptistic, uh, anything you want to, a saucer, anything else. I ain't taking your lie in. Leave it out that way and you'll die with it for telling that lie. Because God knows what I am, and I know what I am, and you don't. But I ain't going to run out there and grab up your baby and baby set for the devil the rest of my life because you had out something. Now, what they thought I'd do, I'd run out and grab that little baby up and say, Look here to America. Here's what this crowd done for me. And I'm going to show them and make them pay for it. And make them sign a lie bill and pay for this disgrace they put on me. Look what I've got. Boy, I'm going to sit on it for the rest of my life. And my minister have been dead and rotten today. Right, 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 right. But when they brought it, I said it ain't so. God knows it ain't so. And everybody that knows me knows it ain't so. And there's the baby. Let her lay there. Yeah. And they're done dead, and I'm still having a good time. Ready to shout any time you crook your finger. Amen. Amen. What are you doing tonight? Baby setting for the devil or enjoying living for God? Amen. Then, my friends, some of the rest of you baby setting for the devil tonight. The devils give you some habits. Yeah. The devils put the bottle in front of you the beer bottle, the whiskey bottle, the wine bottle. He's laid it out then. The devil's had an affair with some fellas and caused them to open up a beer joint or a beer garden. The devil's had an affair with some church members and caused them to give you a social drink. And when he did, he laid, the, he laid that old habit at your doorstep. <laughs> and you looked out there and said, poor little thing. <laughs> little social drink ain't going to hurt nobody. Church, church members get it to me. They said it wasn't going to hurt me. Just a little innocent sleeping thing. Got all those little pajamas. In his innocent. A little beer won't hurt nobody. A little social drink so innocent wouldn't be at her. Oh, oh. So glad to have you with me. 
You're so sweet. I enjoy you so much. You're in your sleeping stage with your pretty pajamas on. You begin to nurse that social drink and that beer once in a while and a little social drink of wine and it's so innocent and it's so harmful but after a while you get so attached to it you can't give it up. You want two drinks instead of one. It's getting so good and you begin to wake up and the beer begins to demand hard liquor and the wine begins to hollow hard liquor and of course you can't let the thing cry. You're just a crying woman. Shut up. Shut up. I can't afford to get drunk. Shut up. I get drunk on you. Give me some more. And to get that little fella shut up, you've got to get drunk. He got to go to the beer joint every day. He just can't where he's got to have it. He likes it so good. You got to take him down there every day and get him some. Then soon you got to take him every night. Then soon he can't do it out of soul. Got to have it all the time. And when he don't get, ah, oh, I just can't stand it. I got to have some. But have a drink. I just can't. If I have to sell my horse, if I have to sell your shoes off, I got to have me some drink. How come? Some churchmen had an affair with that. Had some social drink. Beer gushing, compromising, and pussy foot and preaching, and there's no harm. That's right. Once of these black robe bead captain, fellas run cross country saying it's all right, how to leave a lot of liquor, booze, and wine. Once of these uh, fellas run around calling themselves, which are saying it's no harm, liquor, beer, and wine, serving in the churches and going and drinking the chest. Yeah. That bunch of devils have had an affair with their father, the devil, right, right, and they're taking right. out some demons and ran them on your doorstep. Right. And you're looking at them and grabbing them. Grab them up in their innocence. They look so innocent in their pajamas in the early stage. I just wait till they get to crying for more. Then some old backsliding church members, some of these old card playing sisters in the church, gone dead above his and put on the evening gown and go to these gossiping card parties. Secret smokers. Raising left dogs instead of kids. Hey, 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 around the community, playing cards for the prize. All the difference that the nigger crap can't you cover the skin in the place. Hey, 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 hey. Said to have more no respect for the colored people. They haven't been taught into that. And tell some folks folks know that. But you go down and say, well, there's no harm in a little little card game, a little social card game, give a little prize to keep you just up. And so I'm just no harm. And they said, well, church and mom and pop go to church. They said, no harm. <laughs> they will say, look at that church people playing. See that little innocent thing? You ain't going to hurt nobody to be a little card player. Have a little social card game. Come on. And it looks so innocent, sleeping in his pajamas. Then you take it and start the babysitting for the devil. Next thing you know, your young ones are criminals. In the selected pairs. Then the uh, 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 in the federal penitentiaries for life, because they've gambled away and gone in and become uh, sorcerers and become uh, seducers and things that caused them to get in the federal penitentiary, the electric chair, where they start that little innocent baby. The devil put it at your doorstep, and you start rocking that and baby setting for the devil, and it got all in your family. You tell that devil to leave his baby out on the doorstep. You're not taking it in your house. You've got too much respect for a house that God gives you and a home that God gives you and youngins that God gives you to bring his baby in. And baby said that you didn't take his youngins to raise. You're going to raise your youngins God gave you. And you not want none of his youngins mixed up with your youngins. Make a devil leave his youngins out on your doorstep. And let the devil's crowd go on and rock their babies. Don't you become babysitter for them. Let the crowd that had to out rock your own dirty babies if they want to. Yeah. And we could say that about any other habit, gambling and so forth and so on. But you get the point. So innocent with its pajamas and its sleeping stage. But once it gets in the house, gets attached, it'll throw all kind of fits and you can't let it down. It'll get you. All right. Shackle by habits. 
shackle bound, can't get loose from them. All those cursing habits and all those things. And then my friends come along and the devil has an affair with some church members. Baptist church members. And they hatch out enough. One of these little mini skirt gals. Some girl or woman comes in when the test hits her halfway bar knees. Hey! Look at that girl! Look at that old woman! Old fashioned! You're a liar! I defend them! They're not old fashioned! They've got first. And they're protected. Right. They don't want to expose their virtue. God give it to them. They love it. They respect it. Amen. And say, you dirty eyes, me and keep your eyes off of it. Amen. It's virtue. It's not old-fashioned. It's virtue. And it's something else. It's godliness. There's something about women that wear their clothes long enough that's godly. Right, because they feel godly, they want to act godly and dress godly. But here's some church members backslidden back as it's having a pair with the devil, and the devil's hatched out some little old fuzzy headed meaty skirts. See what well, everybody else is doing it. Fashions. 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 And some woman in the church and her daughters come in all many scared. And the devil said, Look at that. They're extending stop. We don't want our folks to be our balls and chicken and old fashioned. <laughs> Come on in, honey. <laughs> oh, it's so cute. She's wearing no clothes. <laughs> so cute to run around in shorts and harpers and expose your nakedness. <laughs> Everybody else is doing it. Everybody else is living like that. And the preacher says, and thank God he hurt my feet and my family feet. We ain't going to go back home up and hear that preacher. He's too old time and folk and fine at it. We're going to stay home and rock our little ministers. Amen. Amen. You know the reason we call them miniskirts? The meaning of it is mean skirts. Amen. You don't wear them till you get mean. <laughs> and when you start wearing them, you've done got mean. You quit being godly. You quit being righteous. You done got me. And for short, they said many. And now a lot of folks stay to sit in styles and fashions. He's sitting home or devil sitting. Baby, sitting for the devil with all of the fashions of the day. Say, well, everybody else to. And so we're compelled to fall in with a crowd. Embrace heap of hair and cut her dresses off. Let it go. Forget about virtue. You know what it's fixing to do? Less than five years from now, this coming year, in the next two years, your sons and daughters, if you don't know it, are going to be taught all sorts of sex education in the public schools from five years up. They're going to be shown slides of different kinds of acts of immorality. I'm going to show all the acts of between men and women. And if we don't have some men wake up and start preaching, in less than five years from now in America, there'll be classes in the high schools that have appeared for them to have a relationship with each other during the class days. And somebody stand there teaching them the proper and the improper methods. Now that's how far we've gone in America. Why? Because we sit around and let them lay the 
their little babies at our door and right. say nothing about it. Right. Right. Then if the preacher opens up his mouth a bunch of you old backsliding, cold-hearted guys right. run home and gripe and say right. right. and baby, set for the devil, rest your life, rocking your feet. Right. Right. Rocking your cussed immorality and backsliddenness. That's what you do. That's right. And as a result, the world's suffering. Mm-hmm. My friends, the devil will hatch out a bunch of old filthy magazines, a bunch of old filthy pictures. He has relationships with some folks and they throw away their virtue, their dignity, and put it on the screen. And you and your family sit home and look at that hellishness or go out here to one of these passion pits, drive in or sit in theaters, either one of them passion pits to see, right. and feed your family upon that stuff till they got nothing else on the mind. And they're going to start rocking that stuff, and they're just babysitting for the devil to hatch out more young ones to see the devil. That's what it is. I want you to realize all this old true story magazine, true confession, true much filthy, sexy, perverted literature, beloved laying at your door, and you grab it up and take it in there and put it with your family, you're babysitting for the devil, and giving your young ones the devil's children to wreck them and to damn them and to tear them to pieces. And as a result, my friends, I want to say that it'll bring about all sorts of sex perversion, immorality, and the home is gone, and purity is ceased, and God will send the judgment like he did on Sodom and Gomorrah, and like he did upon the, upon the cities uh, in the day of Noah, and like he did down at Gulfport the other day. Right. All right. It wasn't any surprise to me that Gulfport, Mississippi, and all that air got blown away and washed away. It's surprised it's, to me it stood as long as it did. There's the one that hatched out the baby that legalized Miss, uh, whiskey in Mississippi. It hatched out down there. Those hotels and motels and juke joints want li- liquor legalized. The state of Mississippi see, we was the last state to go legally to sell liquor. Bless God, we still don't do it in the county I live in. As long as I live there, they ain't going to set it. If I have to run for sheriff and arrest them myself, I'll do it. I'll fight till I die before they'll put it in our county. They don't sell licking beer in our county. Bunch of, and they got to get a petition and 20% of the, the signers, the voters, legal voters, have to sign it before they can vote on it even. The other day they got a petition out and they're going to get up enough signers to vote on whether they have legalized liquor or not. One of my dear old deacons got up and he said, Brother Pastor, I don't want to embarrass you by you having to make an announcement. I'd like to make it. If any member of Myrtle Baptist Church signs that petition, we find the name on it, we're going to turn them out when we find the name on it. Amen. He said, I just thought I'd tell them all. Amen. And some other folks heard it in the fear of God got them. And some other preachers got all excited. And God got them. And a bunch of us went to the county courthouse and said, Listen, when that petition comes in, will we have a right to see it? said, Preacher, when anything comes in the county courthouse, it becomes public property. You have a perfect right to see every name on there. I said, Thank you. We'll be back to see it. And the news got out that we preachers are going to go see who signed that petition. And they lost that petition and ain't found it yet. <laughs> now listen, are you babysitting for the devil? Or are you one of them just having a fact that the devil hatch his stuff out to make somebody babysit? Have you been having an affair with the devil, hatching out a bunch of stuff to hurt somebody so they they be set for the devil? You ain't got any peace. You're miserable. You're unhappy. God ain't going to use you. You don't have any joy. You're not going to be happy anymore. You get that thing cleaned out and quit having affairs with the devil and clean up your life and say, I'm all out for God and the church and for Jesus Christ. And if you're one of these babies set for the devil, you better leave all them babies out down the doorstep and let them rot out there. And you stay in there with God and serve God and your church and honor God. This illustration I'm through. Over at the camp we have what we call Bethany. It's a place like a modest motel. Nothing to laugh at but comfortable rooms, air conditioned. Bedroom to prayer room. Apartment. Stays open 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Anybody that gets in serious trouble spiritually gets depressed, 
can come there and somebody will pray and counsel with them until they get help. People out of all walks of life are coming. Some time ago, I had a fine big construction man come. And I spent a day and a night with him. He said, Preacher, every time I go to a, buy a newsstand or go in the grocery store or drug store, go by the newsstand, pick up a newspaper, go in the drug store to get medicine or go in the grocery store to get groceries, said, invariably, I'll pick up some old lewd literature. Said, I'll pick up some stuff and I'll get to look at those pictures and my passions get away with me and I go out and do things that I shouldn't do. And he said, it's got a grip on me and it's wrecking my life and destroying my work. And I've come to get you to help me pray. And I talked with him a day and a night and I couldn't get nowhere. He couldn't get nowhere. Finally, I left him and went and got along and stayed with God all night. The next morning, God said, take him up to the old church house and have a prayer meeting with him. I went down and got him next morning. I said, would you like to go up to the old church house where a lot of us pray? Days gone by, he said, it would. We got up there and got the prayer. God got on the scene. And he said, I want to dedicate my life to God and get all out to God. And God said, get him, dedicate his hands. Well, I didn't know why. And I was thinking about, he's a great construction man, handling plans and building great construction buildings. And so on. I thought, well, God wants him to dedicate his hands and use them for him. And I explained to him, God wanted him to dedicate his hands to him. That I felt that was the burden of the prayer. And we got to praying. And the old boy cried and prayed and wept and finally he said yes God you can have my hands they're dedicated to you use them for your glory and don't let them be used for anything else here they are God and if they ever use anything else come on come on God if I'm using for anything else come on come on God I'm ready you just come on if I'm using for anything else and he got those hands dedicated to God and God knows me said to him now he can't handle that filthy loose literature anymore because God cut his hand on him. He dedicated to the gun. And then I said, boy, you know what you've just done? He said, what? I said, you dedicate your hands to God. You can't go back down there and pick up another one of them whose magazines again. And hands of God. And you told him, cut them off. You touched him and said, I said, you stick them up there and God will cut them off. And I said, you don't believe it, go try. He jumped up and said, Woo! Hallelujah! Praise God! Get up through it! I won't have to touch them dirty things no more. My hands is for God. And I'll get your hands for God. Quit picking up them little old beggars. Let them lay off them rough. And stay off there. The devil. Put them on your door. Get down the devil. And those who have the power of the devil. Go on and get your babies and go home. I ain't going to babysit. I'm going to be free and live like I want to. And let me down down babysitting for the devil. Amen. May we stand together, please, with bowed heads. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Surely God has spoken tonight. He sent a message to our hearts. And I'm persuaded to believe tonight that every Christian in this building has been guilty at some time or another babysitting for the devil. God's spoken to my own heart. Jesus said, when I'm come, he said, I'm the truth and I'll make you free. My friends, it's not your prayers and it's not my prayers if we're bound by our ignorance, bound by Satan. We need truth, and God sent truth through his servant tonight to set his people free. I believe this message tonight, if it be obeyed, and if we go out of this building determined by God's grace to obey this message, I believe this message alone, if we'll clean up our house, will bring revival to this country. I believe that tonight. I believe there's those here in this building tonight, right now, you're babysitting for the devil. Someone's told lies on you. Someone's hurt your feelings and you're backslid on God tonight. You're nursing the babies. God will deliver you tonight before you leave this building. If you'll determine right now in your heart by His grace that you're going to trust Him to deliver you, He'll deliver you. I wonder before we leave tonight how many Christians in this building mean it from the heart will say, Preacher, by God's grace and by God's power, I'm going to go out of this building and determine not to babysit anymore for the devil. You lift your hand toward heaven as a testimony for him. All over the building, if you mean business with God, 
Yes, thank God. Thank God. Brother Barbie, would you dismiss us in prayer? Our Father, we thank you tonight for the demonstration of this truth that you've made. Yes, yes. Our hearts. We realize, Lord, like Jeremiah Bull tonight, thy servant, has demonstrated. Yes, yes, yes. We come to thank you, Lord, that this truth has gone home. Yes, us. Lord Jesus. We pray that you'd help us not to permit Satan to conceive things in our lives. Yes. That would cause death when it's brought forth. Yes. That would not only cause things to die in us, cause us to lose our joy, our peace, and our power in God. But our Father will affect others and hurt others and kill others, kill their influence, their testimony. We pray for those tonight that are trapped. Yes. For the devil. Yes. They believe the lie of the devil. Our Father has robbed them from the house of God, the place of service, the place of joy and fellowship and witnessing for Jesus. I pray that somehow tonight, Lord, that you'd help them to give up those things, to put them out of their lives and out of their homes, determined for the great yes. God that they're going to mind the things of God and not the things of the devil. Yes. Oh, Father, tonight we pray that you'd help us to come clean with you, to lay our hands and our lives and our all upon the altar. Yes. Be 100% for Jesus. Yes. For the testimony of the gospel and for the power of God in this day to glorify thy name and to bring me into the knowledge of Jesus Christ. For we pray in his name. Amen.